Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video we're going to be going over resonance structures and how you can determine which resonance structures are good or bad based on formal charges and let's get into this. So in this particular problem we're given three different resonance structures uh, for nitrous oxide and so here they are right here. So we have these three resonance structures for nitrous oxide, N2O. And we have a couple of questions. First, A, can you eliminate any of these resonance structures based on formal charges? So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna assign formal charges to each of the atoms. Now, formal charge is a hypothetical charge based upon the division of electrons. And we're gonna assume that the electrons in a bond are evenly uh, distributed, evenly divided between the atoms, right? So that's the assumption we're gonna make. And so that the lone pairs are uh, kept on the atom. So the lone pairs belong to that atom, they're not shared. Bonded electrons are shared. We're gonna assume that they're equally shared. And the way you uh, calculate formal charge is you compare the number of electrons that the atom would have based on the valence electrons and then uh, divvy up the electrons based on what what it is in the in the molecule itself and then compare okay so we're going to look at that uh, for each one so the formula that we're going to do is going to be the number number of valence electrons minus uh, one half of the bonded electrons minus uh, lone pairs or the electrons in lone pairs, I should say, minus electrons in lone pairs. Okay, so that's gonna give us formal charge. Okay, so uh, for nitrogen, in this atom, so so nitrogen has five valence electrons because it's in group five. So it's going to be five, and then we're going to subtract out the basically this one half of bonded electrons is basically uh, one electron per bond. Since there's two electrons in a bond, and you take half of that, that leaves one, and so <clears throat> basically you're going to count one electron in for, for each bond and subtract that. So here I have two bonds. That's one electron from each bond, that's two. So I'm gonna subtract out two. And then I'm gonna subtract out any lone pairs. So that's two and four. So I'm gonna start to subtract out four. So that's gonna be equal to minus one. So minus one. So the formal charge is going to be minus one. Let me use a different marker. So here the formal charge is minus one. Okay. Same thing here. So here I have nitrogen is five. So five valence electrons. And then I'm going to subtract out one for each bond. I have four bonds. One, two, three, four. And so I'm going to subtract out four. I don't have any lone pairs, so that's going to be subtracting zero for the lone pairs. And so that's going to be equal to a positive one. So then, so here the formal charge is a positive one. And then for the oxygen here, oxygen is in group six. So I'm going to have six of valence electrons. I'm going to subtract out two, uh, two for the bond, so one for each bond, two bonds, so that's two electrons. So subtract out two, and then I have two lone pairs, that's four electrons. I'm going to subtract out four, 
So six minus two minus four is zero. And so this is gonna have a zero formal charge. So, and then I just do that for each one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of do the math. So for this one, again, nitrogen is gonna be, if we do that one, we'll do, redo the calculations. So that's gonna be five for the valence electrons minus uh, one for each bond. So I have three bonds here, so that's gonna be three, and then minus two for the lone pair, two, and that's gonna be zero. So that's gonna give me zero on that oxygen, or I'm sorry, nitrogen. Now for this nitrogen here, I got five valence electrons. I have one, two, three, four bonds. So I'm gonna subtract out four for the bonds. And I don't have any lone pairs, so that's zero. So five minus four gives me a plus one. So again, this is gonna be plus one. And then for this oxygen here, I have, uh, again, six valence electrons for the oxygen. I have one bond, so that's one electron for the bond. And I have three lone pairs, that's six total, so I'm gonna subtract out six. And that's gonna give me a negative one for the formal charge. And so that's gonna be minus one. And then I just do the same thing here. So again, if I erase this, uh, so here again, nitrogen has five valence electrons. I'm gonna subtract out one for each bond. That's one bond. And then I have uh, six, I have six electrons valence uh, for the lone pairs. So three lone pairs, six electrons. I'm gonna subtract those. So then I'm gonna have a minus two for the formal charge. So this is gonna have a minus two. And now for this one, again, I have one bond here, triple bond. So basically the same as here, here, I always have, it seems I have four bonds. So this is also going to be a plus one again, right? So again, just to show that I have five valence electrons for the nitrogen. I'm gonna subtract out four electrons for the bond. One, uh, one for each bond, so that's four bonds, four electrons. And then I don't have any lone pairs, so that's zero. So five minus four is a plus one. So that's what I have here. And then finally, for the oxygen, oxygen is group six, so that's six valence electrons again. I'm gonna subtract out one electron for each bond. So I have three bonds there, so that's a three. And I'm gonna subtract out for the lone pairs, I have one lone pair, that's two electrons, subtract out two, and that's gonna be equal to a plus one. And so that's gonna be a plus one. Okay, so now, now we can do a question A. So can you eliminate any of these resonance structures based on formal charges? Now, the thing you gotta keep in mind about formal charges is that the best Lewis dock structure or the best um, resonance structure uh, for any um, molecule or polyatomic ion is gonna be is gonna follow three basically um, three conditions. There are three things you want to look at. So one is the number of the formal charges. How many formal charges do you have in your molecule? or ion. Uh, the second one is how large are those formal charges? So the, uh, the, Lewis, the best Lewis dot structure is going to be the one with the least number of formal charges, the sheer bulk or sheer number of formal charges. And the charges themselves are going to be low in magnitude. They're gonna be, you know, rather than plus or minus twos and threes, you're gonna have lower values like one. And then the third factor you wanna look at is, does the 
more electronegative atom have the negative formal charge. That is preferable. That makes sense because more electronegative atoms are wanting to draw those electrons closer to it. So it should have a negative charge, right? So the formal charge, a negative formal charge should be on the more electronegative atom, okay? So let's take a look at what we have here. So if we look at these two compared to this one, you'll see that this has three formal charges. Both of these have one. The zero is not, no, it's not a charge, it's zero. So this has two formal charges and this has two formal charges. So this one is not as favorable, right? In addition to that, look at the uh, size of the formal charges. Here we have a negative two, here we have ones. So this one has, not only does it have more formal charges, but the formal charge is larger. We have a two instead of a one. And then finally, if you look at the charge here, the formal charge on oxygen is a positive one. Oxygen is the more electronegative atom. We would expect that to have a negative formal charge. So you can see here that it's zero for oxygen in this one, and in this one it's negative. So these are preferable. So by all factors, all three uh, factors, it gets a strike. So there's three strikes against this one. So this one would definitely be the one that would be eliminated. So we would eliminate this one, right? So this one would be eliminated. So these are the two that we're looking at. And so um, using these two, we can go ahead and answer this question now. So what is this question B? It says the NN single bond length in nitrous oxide is 112 picometers and the NO single bond or the NO bond, I shouldn't say single bond, the NO bond, oh, here the NN bond, sorry, not the single bond. So the NN bond length in nitrous oxide is 112 picometers. The NO bond length uh, is going to be 119 picometers. Uh, rationalize these two observations. Here's a table of bond lengths. So we see that the bond length for an NN single bond is 167 picometers. We see that the bond length for NN double bond is 120 picometers. And the NN triple bond has a 110 picometers. So you can see, again, as the, uh, as the bond order increases, as you go from single, double to triple, the bond length decreases, right? That's to be expected because more negative electrons between the atoms is attracting these, those uh, nuclei to closer together. Here you can see that the NO double bond is 115 picometers whereas the NO single bond is 147 picometers. So the single bond is again, larger or longer than the uh, NO double bond. Okay, so we're gonna use this. They're telling us that uh, the NN bond length is uh, 112. Now, look here, notice that we have these two resonance structures. So remember when we're dealing with resonance structures, it's not, don't get the idea that there's some sort of resonating back and forth as if the molecule really is, you know, fluctuating back and forth between these two uh, versions. That's not what's going on. What's actually the case is that the actual molecule is a hybrid of both of these, right? So the actual molecule is gonna be some mixture or hybridization or hybrid of these two. So it's uh, the bonds are going to be somewhere between the, these bonds and these bonds. So you can see here that uh, between this one and this one, the nitrogen, nitrogen bond is going to be somewhere between uh, a, a triple and double bond. So it's gonna be between a double and triple bond, right? And then you can see also for the NO bond here, it's gonna, it's gonna be somewhere between a double 
and a single because remember this is a hybrid so if i have a double bond over here and a single bond over here if i hybridize those if i get the average of the bond right the average between the single and double is going to be somewhere in between right same thing with the double and the triple between the and n bond okay so that explains if you look here right so they say the n n bond is 112 so 112 is between the triple bond which is 110 and the double bond which is 120 so it does fall between there but you'll notice it's much closer to the triple bond why is that well the reason for that is because as we know nitrogen loves to have triple bonds that bonding order the bond order of a nitrogen uh, is a triple bond that's the preferred bonding order or bonding number of bonds right so if you have a nitrogen in an in a um, organic molecule uh, usually it'll have triple bond with a lone pair so one not not a triple bond three bonds and one lone pair so because the nitrogen prefers to have three bonds it's going to be closer to the triple bond so um so 112 where's 112 112 here is definitely closer to the triple bond which is what we would expect now for the uh no bond the no bond we're told is 119 if we look here 119 is close much closer to the no double bond than to the no single bond right and the reason for that we can rationalize that is because uh oxygen notice oxygen is between uh a, a single and a double bond well oxygen prefers to have a double bond so it's going to have uh it's going to side with the more double bond character in this case so the oxygen here would uh have uh would would want to have the most double bond character or would lean towards the uh double bond character which is what you notice here so the double bond character is 115 for the double bond and 119 so that would explain why we see a uh, uh 119 picometers for the oxygen why it's closer to the double bond where where the nn bond length is uh 112 right and that's much closer to the triple bond because again nitrogen if it can prefers to have uh three bonds and oxygen if it can prefers to have double bonds so the oxygen is going to uh, lean more towards the uh, double bond character and the nitrogen is going to lean more towards the uh the triple bond character now if you're wondering about the middle nitrogen here well, what about that one well you'll notice that no matter what uh um what resonance structure it has, it's, it always has four bonds. So the middle nitrogen doesn't have a choice. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope uh, that was helpful. If that was helpful, if you enjoyed this video, then by all means, like the video, share the video, hit that like button over here somewhere. And also do me a favor, show me some love, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. When you do click all, so you'll be notified by all the videos I put out. Finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. If you have a question or a problem you need help with, or if, you're, if you have a topic that you would like me to go over, then please let me know down below. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.